officially returning and everything. Was, was this really just a fact, you know, a fact-based mission to see what NBA people said about him, or was there serious consideration that he would be leaving? Uh, probably 99 percent. Uh, I'll use your terminology, fact uh, finding. I mean, he wanted to see uh, where he stood. He wanted to uh, get some workouts. If he had gone to the workouts and blown people away and they said, we're going to take you with the 10th pick, you know, the plan would have changed. And that's my opinion. I mean, we talked originally about what we hoped would happen, and that's exactly what happened, is that he was able to go to, I think, three workouts and uh, uh, get some experience of going through the workouts, getting three teams to tell him uh, some things they thought about his game. And uh, uh, I talked to them, and they told me some things, that what they thought. And so we got the information. Uh, uh, but I think, uh, as I say, I think that was the whole purpose of it, and I think that it was accomplished. Now, if he had gone in, like I say, if he had gone in, and, and I've seen some guys do that before that just – blow people away in a workout or two or three days and all of a sudden go from not being drafted to uh, I remember a player in the uh, Big Eight a long time ago nobody thought it was going to be a first round pick and was invited as a senior to some workouts and made every shot for three days and was the 10th player picked you know so you never can't tell what's going to happen but that was the plan. On, on that topic uh, Joel Berry and Theo Pinson what insight do you have to what they've been going through pre-draft stuff workouts and well, this is the week. In fact, I spoke to uh, uh, Joel's agent. Uh, what day today is? Camp goes on. You don't have any idea what day it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So Sunday night, and uh, it's this is a week. I'll probably start calling all the teams myself after the workouts are over with. Uh, uh, but uh, they've had several workouts. Theo may have had more workouts than, than Joel has. Uh, so right now, it's just trying to find out. Uh, what those people think about him, which places Joel and Theo both uh, felt like they played the best. Call those teams if it, uh, somebody has the second pick in the draft and that's the only draft choice they had, you know, I probably won't call those that team. But if it's somebody that uh, I think could legitimately be considering Joel and Theo, then I'll call them and talk to them and see if I can clear up some things and hopefully help them. How do you think Theo's game kind of translates to the NBA? People have said that because of his size and his versatility, he has a chance to. I think things. Theo is an NBA player. I think he can play in the NBA. I think he can be successful in the NBA. He is something that the NBA wants. They want athletes, they want shooters, they want playmakers. And uh, I think he is a fantastic playmaker. I mean, I'm trying to get people to look at him as a point guard. Uh, he wasn't called that with our team because we had a pretty good guy at the point guard spot, but Theo was more of a playmaker than anybody we had, and he's 6'6", so they like that size as a point guard. And uh, everybody has questions about whether there's ball going in the basket when he shoots it. And uh, uh, But there's a lot of guys that uh, have been successful in the NBA that uh, uh, didn't shoot it as well as everybody wanted them to, and I think Theo can be that kind of guy because I think he can make plays for other people. Right. With you and Joel, you know, the last two real major pieces of that championship being gone now, and the NCAA stuff in the past and all, do you kind of feel like this is the start of maybe a new era or a new chapter for, for this program uh, moving forward? Well, I thought, excuse me, I thought uh, it was a new era for me. Was it last September or whenever? Uh, we were able to put the NCAA stuff behind us because I could do my job in a different way than I had for four years. So that point was when I thought it was. But I think other than that, I think every year is a new chapter. I really do. I look at a, a team that we have, uh, <coughs> Joel Berry, uh, Theo Pinson, meant so much to us for four years. Uh, we're the leaders of our team, um, definitely last year and maybe even – the last couple of years, you know, along with Justin and uh, uh, Isaiah and those guys the year we won it. But uh, I do look at every year as a, a start, but we're losing some uh, tremendously gifted kids who uh, uh, shared the leadership of that team maybe as well as any team I've ever had. Uh, and yet we're bringing in some kids who I think are very gifted uh, that uh, uh, 
uh, maybe even more gifted uh, than what we're losing. But that doesn't mean they're going to be as good of players because experience is a huge part of uh, playing the game of basketball too. And I think all three guys we have coming in are going to be very, very good players for us. But uh, I do look at every year, it's okay, it's, it's a new team. It's completely different. And, and I think it's really easy to see even if you only have two losses. You know, if you lose Marcus and Bryce, you know, Joel was important to us too, but you lose Marcus and Bryce and all that playing time, that changed. You lose Theo and Joel, that next team's going to change. And, and I like that part of it. How much of a difference is there on the recruiting trail getting a, a greater volume of high caliber kids being uh, genuinely interested in the program now? as opposed to when the cloud was kind of hanging. Well, for, you know, you guys have heard me say this. I'm, I've said it so many times. I'm dag, I'm tired of saying it. But first 10 years, we recruited 26 McDonald's All-Americans. The next four years, we recruited one. I didn't get that dumb that quickly. And then last year, we got two. Uh, we had uh, uh, Zion Williamson, who was a top five player. We had uh, Romeo, who was a top five player. They visited. Uh, and we went through four years. We couldn't even get anybody to visit. So it's definitely. Uh, better had made it any easier. It's still hard to get those kind of guys, but uh, uh, we we have made ourselves back into who we were for a long time. That a uh, uh, possibility for several kids that we were not for three or four years. To that end, do you feel like Nas Little actually coming here that might open the door for you know, that kind of elite top ten kind of players going forward? Well, you know. It, I love Nasir. I think he's going to be a fantastic player, but I love Kobe White too, and I love Leakey also. Not just him, but I think, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy that really was, everybody thought was a very good player, but really just went, uh, his stock went screaming high after those two All Star games. But I don't ever get caught up in that. I mean, I've had guys before that uh, play. I'll give you a story. It was a great high school coach. Said the biggest disappointment by far was worthy. And I said, I want you to, he didn't realize I was standing behind him. And I said, I want you to remember this moment because there's going to be a time in your life that you're going to tell me that that's the dumbest blankety blank thing you've ever said. And that happened. He did tell me that was the dumbest thing. And I've seen other guys go in and play great and didn't do well in college. You know, so it's I don't ever get too carried away on those, but everybody else does. I'm serious. Everybody's gone wacko. Uh, I don't think Nasir is any better right now than he was before the McDonald's game or before the Jordan game. I happened to love him before that, uh, but uh, I have had some guys play great in those games, and uh, some guys question how could you recruit Marcus Page? He didn't do anything. By God, he's a pretty damn good player. And I'd take him over again too, so that part doesn't bother me. Back, so I'll talk back to Luke for a second. Mm -hmm. Just what, with the obvious sort of caveat that this would have been a difficult question to answer last year too. But what are your expectations for him this year after what he did last year, and now with the feedback he's gotten? Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I walked into gym last night because uh, we got some more guys coming in. John came in yesterday. Harrison came in today, and so I went in to see who's. Knew last night Tyler Zeller came down to play with them. Uh, uh, so I just walked in the gym for, I wasn't there five minutes watching them play. And uh, Luke gets the ball off the board and busts out on the dribble, which he was able to do last year. Um, last year, two words always came out of my mouth. No, one word I just said it at least twice, and that was easy, easy. You know, but last night he takes it down the court, and I didn't think easy, easy. I just wanted to see what he would do. And he really made a heck of a play, taking it all the way. And, making a tough left-handed shot over a pretty good shot blocker. and So I'm not going to uh, uh, limit what I think Luke can do. Uh, I didn't do that last year, and so I'm hoping that we can still see some improvement, and I think we will. Because, look, he's, he's going to put in the time. And, you know, if you put in the time and sweat, you get better. And I think he's also really intelligent that uh, knows where he can improve himself. Uh, we've had some talks about what to do, and uh, – so I'm not going to limit him. Uh, last year, I mean, it, it was a it was a famous remark, and one of our staff meetings, "Well, coach, you're a lot higher on Luke than everybody else is." And I said, "Yes, I am," and I'm going to be the same way this year too. Among your your returners, do you foresee any surprises? Anybody you <coughs> really improved their game over this summer? You know, 
the rules are you can't watch them a lot unless you count it as your two hours. So I don't, I don't watch them a lot. Uh, during July, I'll have a much better answer to that question because we'll practice four times. We'll practice once a week for four straight weeks during July. Well, no, I think we take the week of the fourth off, but uh, we have four practices, and I'll have a much better answer then. Uh, I've been really impressed by what uh, uh, Jonas, our strength conditioning coach, is telling us about a bunch of guys. I've been really impressed what Doug is telling me about how guys are doing a much better job of taking care of their body. Uh, I've been impressed by some of the things that the uh, uh, veterans are saying about each other, who's playing better. Uh, I like to talk to the Tyler Zellers, uh, uh, the Kendall Marshalls of the world, and get their information about who they think's playing better in the pickup games too. But really, I get most of my information after those practices. How important yeah. is it for at least one or more of those big guys to kind of make a, a, a big jump this year? Well, you guys you have been around a while. Look at our team. Uh, Two spot, we got Kenny and got some people that can go in there and play that spot besides him. Three spot, we have Cam and got some guys that can go in there and play that spot besides him. The four spot, we've got Luke and hopefully got some other guys that we can move around. So the two question marks are point guard and a big guy. And so somebody's got to come through at those two spots. And if they do, we've got a chance to be really, really good. If they don't, we'll, we'll have to fight. And uh, that's what it boils down to. But I have been impressed by the uh, uh, all four of the big guys uh, about what they've been doing in the weight room, what they've been doing in individual workouts, what they've been doing uh, uh, when we're asking them to do extra things. I've been impressed by all four of them. I mean, uh, Walker is 15 to 20 pounds uh, bigger and stronger than he was last year. Um, he had more work to do on his body than anybody else has had to do. You know, Huff and Garrison were pretty well cut to start with, and they've still been doing the same thing. And I think Sterling has shown uh, uh, a much uh, uh, more devoted, uh, focused uh, thing on working out. I mean, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, if I'm in town, I work out in the strength and conditioning in the weight room and balance, flexibility, 50% weights. And there's a lot of times I just – Instead of just walking straight from the parking lot, I would walk the parking lot just to look in the gym and then come in. And I saw Sterling in there a lot of mornings at 8 a.m. in the morning. So in the spring, so I've been impressed with all of them. Chance he, make, he passes the running test this year? We'll see. If he doesn't, he can't start. It's a pretty easy deal. Do you have an update on Cam Johnson's health and surgery recently? Yeah, uh, yesterday I got the best update I've had because one of the campers asked him that question. He said, I feel great. You know, so they're being very, very cautious with him. It's a, it's a, a procedure that we really want to make sure that he's completely healthy. They're limiting him and anything and everything he's doing right now. But you ask him, he said, "Hey, I feel great. Feel better walking around than I've ever felt walking around in years." Uh, so we don't know how that translates. So he's not like doing pickup or he's oh, not no, playing. Oh no, 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 no. You know, we don't, we don't have any game schedules. I know the ACC's really. Ridiculous on some of their schedule, but I haven't seen any games in frickin' July yet. <laughs> Boy, with, with, with COVID, have we? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> with COVID, 30 games, good. Yeah, 30 yeah. game ACC schedule. With COVID, you, I, I guess you would envision him playing both guard positions. Uh -huh. is, is that as much out of his skill set as necessity? Because obviously, no, that's who he is. In. That's who he is. I mean, I. When I first started recruiting, I recruited him as a point guard, period. <coughs> but he can do some other things that can play. Uh, he was, uh, I guess it was summer after his sophomore year that I probably saw him play 15 games. And he played point guard. And uh, as if you've heard me say, in one game he has five threes and five dunks. That's a pretty good combination. It means you can do something outside and inside both. Uh, he's an instinctive passer. Uh, I recruited him as a point guard, and the fact that he can play with somebody else is, is gives him more playing time. But that's what I recruited him as. His scoring ability, the way he can come up with in, in bunches, is is that does that carry? I like, compare to a guy you brought in, somebody you can describe. I've never had anybody that had the freedom that that boy had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're the leading scorer, can you throw that in the trash can back there? 
you're the leading scorer in North Carolina history, that means you shot a hell of a lot. <laughs> okay, and he did. Uh, but he makes a bunch of them too. So, no, he uh, he's a basketball player. I mean, he really is. Now, uh, the one thing that will have to become more important to him is his field goal percentage. But if he didn't get 30 or 40 or whatever, they had a difficult time beating a good team. So if I was coaching him, I'd say, if it feels like leather, shoot it. You know, that's about the only guideline I would have given him if I'd been his high school coach. But uh, uh, at this level, he's got to be more concerned about his field goal percentage, and, and I think he will. Any early thoughts on the hair? Whether that hair is going to make it to October, November? Oh, his hair? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know, what about you? <laughs> I knew what he was talking about. <laughs> you know, I've never been concerned about a guy's hair. Jesus Christ. You know, if he guards somebody, his hair looks daggum good. If he makes a basket in addition to that, it looks better. You know, yeah, but, you know, he, he uses the hair to get another half inch. You know, he wants to be 6'5". So, but, no, I... A long time ago, I had not stopped worrying about a guy's hair. There's a great, uh, I don't even know if I get this right, Tanny Hill, quarterback at South Carolina. Yeah, and the greatest line ever. I mean, his dad sent him to get a haircut. He said he's tired of looking at his hair. He went to get the haircut. It was Sports Illustrated. And uh, he comes back, and his dad didn't think he'd gotten enough hair cut off. And told him, get in the car. And takes him to the car. And, Storms into the barbershop and said, I told him I wanted this cut off. And the barber said, looked at him and said, oh, he said, I didn't realize that cutting his hair would make your son a different person. And the dad said, get up. And they took him back out and realized what the crap he's talking about. And I think that's pretty good. My grandson is in camp right now. <laughs> he's got a freaking mohawk. <laughs> okay, eight-year-old with a mohawk. You think I'm going to – that's something that uh, they didn't have any discussion with the head coach. And in front of my name, it says head coach. <laughs> so for guys just freaking show up, decide to put on headbands and get our ass kicked. Have you seen any of them since? <laughs> <laughs> if, all, if everybody on my team goes and puts their finger in the electrical socket and their hair ends up looking like Kobe and we go out and get our butts beat, they ain't everybody going to look like Kobe the next day. So. What are two areas that Sterling improved the most during the season? Any area that was dramatic improvement? Uh, no, I think the, the learning what he's supposed to do, it was better and everything. But I think the maturity that he got at the end, looking back on the season and wondering if he could have done more, wondering if he could have done better, I think the maturity of that has been uh, – has been probably the biggest improvement, the work ethic. I mean, he's never been a bad worker, but if you want to be a great player, you got to pay the price. Steph Curry is not the greatest shooter maybe in the history of the game because he walked in and went to practice and then left. I mean, he put in the time, but I think that's the – I think I'm seeing a better, uh, more focused Sterling than anything else. His acknowledgement in Charlotte the last week in the season, <clears throat> he kept talking about that mile and how he's going to get the time. He said, I'm going to get it in July, so it's not even an issue in September. Is that kind of what you're talking about, recognition about things like that? Well, I think the recognition, the fact that he needs to do that is important because, you know, you lose a little respect if you can't do that kind of thing with your teammates. They want to see some toughness out of you. Uh, but uh, it's not July yet. He hadn't given me a date yet, so <laughs> I'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yes? The, the Elon game early next season, uh -huh. what, what – what made you say yes when they asked? Uh, aren't they opening up a new arena? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. You know, we did it for UNC Asheville. We did it for College of Charleston. I happen to like him. I think he's a good young coach. I, I think Elon's a good school. Doug Moe's favorite school other than North Carolina. So uh, uh, I'm crazy enough to do a lot of different things. You know, you've heard the story. We, I called Fran Dunphy. He's coaching at Penn. I said. Would you like to play us and we'll come play there first? He thought I was drunk. <laughs> and, and nobody ever gave him that kind of call, but my radio guy had said that he had never done a game from the palestra. You know, so I'll do some games for some crazy things. But uh, my staff's mad at me because we open up at Elon and at Wofford, you know, and Wofford is all right. <laughs> yeah. Time for a couple more. Matt, just to follow up on that, Matt, Matt has sort of given a lot of credit to Bill Petty 
is like a chief negotiator type guy in, in the in the Elon situation. <laughs> is that? I mean, was he a hard guy to say no to, or just how did that? No, I can say milk no easy. Okay. No, <laughs> you know, I, Elon is a local school. I mean, look at who we play in exhibitions. I don't think since I've been here we played anybody out of the state in any exhibition game, have we? Not the last. Year. I mean, I like to give. If you want to give money to people, why not give it to people that you know and people in your own state? Uh, Milt Petty is a great guy. I love him to death, but uh, I don't think I ever talked to him. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I don't think he I. Supposedly was on the phone with somebody a lot. Well, that's okay, but he wasn't on the dang phone with me about that game, you know. But no, it, he may have brought the idea up, and he may have even said something. Uh, would you consider playing Elon? But you know, I'm a big boy. <laughs> I don't have to have somebody politic me to play a game. Bobby Crimmins called and said, "Would you come play us?" I said, "Yeah." You know. The freshman coming in. That Wofford guy said, "Would you play a two for one?" I said, "Yeah." Yeah, yeah I tell I say no to a lot of times, but I'm a big boy. I can say yes and no both. With the freshmen coming in that uh, are highly touted and expected to push some of the older guys up, what are you expecting and need from Brandon and Seven? To be better. Just be better. Just get better. Biggest thing with Seventh, stay healthy. I'm serious, guys. He hasn't been healthy three weeks in a row since he's been here. So we need him to stay healthy. Stay in front of the ball. Don't turn it over. You can be a good point guard with his skills if you stay in front of the ball and don't turn it over because he's he can do some good things. And Brandon, like all of them, just get better. It's been 15 years now. I was curious if you could reflect on your memories from the first week when you were here with uh, the program and the team in 2003 when you first came back to Chapel Hill. I remember the first workout and uh, <laughs> uh, one of the guys not knowing it, I'd walked in behind him said, guys, that shows one thing. We had, by God, better get in shape. We had had an 18-minute workout, 18 minutes, and two guys wanted to, you know, puke. So I knew I had that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the one thing I remember. And uh, But other than that, I mean, it's been a quick 15 years. It really has. Uh, but I remember the uh, – I felt like I had to win, and I felt like I needed to get the uh, former players back involved. And if I don't win, I'm going to get fired. Uh, but I wanted to get the former players back involved, and that's the two things that uh, we focused. And fortunately for me, uh, we had really good players. Sean May made the decision that he was going to be a different player. That was the biggest thing. Raymond Felton changed his shot. That's more significant than anybody I've ever coached at the college level because that is hard to do at that age. So you put both these those two things together, and we had a great run our second year. Right, I know they're different games, but there's talk about how Golden State's a dynasty. What would it take to be a dynasty in college basketball now? You can't do what UCLA did, right? Yeah, I think it's harder. You know, there's so many good players. Uh, you know, Duke and in Kentucky have gone one and done more than anybody else. Uh, Villanova hasn't done that at all. And who's been more successful the last three or four years? You know, so I just think it's harder. Uh, for a dynasty, you've got to have talent and experience. And going one and done, you're never going to have the experience. And Duke had a great run in 15, and Kentucky had a great run in 12. And they may do it again next year and the following year. But it's harder to do it without uh, the experience and the talent both. So would you take more than one recruiting class? Because you, know, like, you went two years in a row, Villanova went one, two, two out of three. What beyond that becomes a dynasty? More than that. I mean, you know, because I don't <laughs> think we had a dynasty. I don't think Villanova had a dynasty. But, uh, you know, I don't think it will ever be done. I mean, Kareem played for four years. Walton played for four. Oh, Kareem played for three, I guess. Walton played for three. Uh, so uh, guys don't stay around that long anymore. So I don't think you have that. And there's so many good players. I mean, uh, that's the biggest thing. There's, uh, there's teams that more teams that have a chance. I mean, think about it. when I was assistant coach. They were my first year. There were seven teams in the ACC. Seven. My God, it's a heck of a lot harder to beat 14 than it is six. So that's harder. Same thing in the NCAA. I mean, 
when UCLA won all those things, it was you had to win four games to win a national championship. Now you got to win six, and so it's it's just so much harder now. Got time for one more? Yep. Coach, this is the time of the year when Luke and Cam will really be taking on a bigger leadership role. What are your expectations to see out of them in the next season? Well, you know, again, I'll go back. I said two, three, and four I pretty, feel pretty comfortable with on the court, but they're great kids. I mean, you know, I'm very, very lucky because they do a great job on the court, great job in the classroom. I got a letter about Kenny Williams on my desk right now that I got Monday. The things that they do off the court out where nobody knows what's going on about the way Kenny grabbed some little kid and put his arm around him and helped him through a difficult situation. And, I mean, you know, you just – those are the kind of things that I love. But, I mean, they're big-time players, and they're wonderful kids, and they have the total, total 100% respect from everybody on their team. If you ask everybody on our team who the three hardest workers are, it might be a little different now because of Cam's holding him out stuff. They're going to say Luke, Kenny, Cam. And that's a pretty good position to be in because they have – they have the entire package for you, and uh, we'll ask them to make every shot, block every shot, get every rebound and all those, and anything they do less than that we'll accept. But uh, uh, it, it's a great position to be in to have those three kids uh, with their ability and with the character that they have it makes things a lot more fun. It's, it's going to be a fun team to coach. A lot of people, my, you know, my high school coach said that may be the best job you've ever done this past year. You had to change. You had to do things differently. And you may have heard me say, I, if I were a young coach, I would have really enjoyed last year. And as looking back on it, would have said, boy, that's really good for me. I'm not a young coach anymore. I just want a daggum win. <laughs> you know, I don't need to have my everything expanded, my horizons and all that junk. Hell, I want to win. You know, if I can win playing five guys and never do anything else, that's what I want to do. But it was a, uh, it's a great group to coach, and I'm really looking forward to coaching this team.